Well, today I have a little bit of extra time to where I'm going to fool around with something I picked up in a state sale. And I put a photo of this on my Instagram, but um, I have not made a video on it. I picked this up in an estate sale. I just thought it was too cool to pass. Now, I cleaned it up. This was completely brown with rust. This is cast iron. And I took it over to my buffer and buffed it. And I didn't bother videoing any of the buffing. That's just boring. But the ashtray receptacles are all missing. And I did a little research on this. This is called a, a house, H-O-U-Z-E, smoking stand. And there's supposed to be little ashtrays in here they're glass i thought maybe some apparatus that went underneath here too but no they're just little d-shaped things and i found find these on the internet and they're about four to five hundred dollars i i got this at 50 bucks and uh the ashtrays and all of them i find are missing and i think there's probably one of two reasons people knock these over accidentally and they fall out and break or they take them out to clean them and break them, or they take them out to carry them around to smoke elsewhere and lose them. I've only found one with the complete set in there of green ashtrays, and the base was a little different. They're like glass like this. And they also made these with uranium glass. They glow under black light. But I'm going to make ashtrays out of steel, and I'll show you what I'm going to use. So I got a bunch of this gauge steel from other projects, and it's fairly thick. I'm going to have to cut it out with a plasma cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a paper template of the bottom and so it's bent up and even with the top edge here across. And then I'm going to make another piece of curve in there and then I'll just weld it around there. And then I'm going to paint them gloss black acrylic enamel like that Briggs & Stratton engine. So, you know, see how this, this glass is real nice and shiny. And I think with that being black, black ashtrays would look good in there. And I think real glossy like that would look nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't smoke, but I just thought this was super cool. And it's probably about period correct for my house. And I also picked up one of these. This is a Ronson Crown lighter. They make a lot of different type of lighters. Whoops. But it does work. You know, why have something if it doesn't work, right? So sometimes it, I don't push it. You got to push it firmly and quickly. See how it doesn't spark sometimes? Might need that wheel cleaned, that little wheel that sparks a flint. But that's basically all I did to this was clean it up and put a new flint in it. I don't think it had ever been used. The flint had looked like it, somebody had taken the flint out for something else. But yeah, I just thought that that was kind of went with this. So I got that also. And this was, I don't remember, it was like $12 or something like that. And my mom had one when I was a kid. She used to have on the coffee table. Identical. I think they're pretty commonplace. But anyway, well, that's what we're going to work on today. So I'm going to get some paper and stuff and start making little templates right now. And as far as the car goes, yeah, I've been using it. And, uh, you know, you, people who watch this video might not be interested in the cars and the car people might not be interested in this. But if you're a longtime viewer of mine, you know I fool with all kinds of things, not just cars. You know, I've done motorcycles, mowers, power equipment. I just like doing doing unique things, you know, things that are a little different. I just thought this was just, you know, totally off the wall different. That's why I got it. And, you know, I'll just it'll just be a nice decoration smoking stand. I mean, who would have thunk? You know, back in the day, I guess everybody smoked inside and everywhere so that's why they had things like this but again i have been using that i had it out yesterday with the top down it was in the 70s today it's only in the 40s and the whole long-term forecasts are talking um 50s for highs so i doubt i'll be putting the top down and i'll probably still be driving and i've put a couple hundred miles on it since the last the last video i made with this i think it had 503 miles on the and I checked the gas mileage and I got 17.64 miles of the gallon 
Yeah, it's got uh, 7, 79, 719 on it now. So yeah, I've driven it, been driving it, use it to run my errands, do my running around. Basically, I've been driving it almost as my everyday summer cruiser, summer car. You know, I mean, I enjoy driving it. It's a nice drive. It starts right up. It runs and drives like a new car. So, yeah, I've been using it. All right, let me get to this uh, project here. So I'm going to cut this out and fit it down. First, I'm going to set it on here and trace from the other side around on this so I can cut this out so I can bend it up so it'll have one less weld on here and you won't see it. But I'm gonna leave this a little longer. It might protrude up a little bit and then I can cut it or grind it down or whatever. So I'm gonna make one that fits perfect and then I'll make the rest off of it. I'm gonna have to plasma cut this stuff and then I'll have to clamp them all together and grind them all together so they're the same. But um, and yeah, and I picked up these at an estate sale and they're pretty dull. And I picked up this at an estate sale. That I've had. That I was going to put in the garage window here in the summer when it was really hot. But it was up north at the cottage, so I brought it home. But I picked this up. And, uh, whoops, it's not plugged in here. And uh, it pumps water. It sharpens scissors. You can see the little a little stream of water in there shows up or not but it all works exactly as it's supposed to sharpens knives and scissors immaculately I went and sharpened every pair of scissors that we had around here does a does an amazing job there's the, the water pulsing out and then there's the the water reservoir coming back in So yeah, there is a whetstone grinder and I, I don't even remember, I think I paid 20 bucks for it. I, don't, I, I bought several things, so everything came to $20, so might have been like 10 or 15 depending on, I, one of the things was a pair of scissors, this vacuum gauge, and there was a couple other odds and ends I got too, and it was all 20 bucks. State sales are a good place to pick stuff up if you need things you know I mean why not get something good cheap all right let me trace this out that's kind of the opening but I'm going to trim it down straight down obviously so I can fold that up we'll see how that uh, get this to fit first made the part that goes down in here and I tried it in all four receptacles in case if um the casting is slightly different but it fits in them all pretty good and uh, now i'm going to make a piece that would go around here that would weld around the edge here and this metal is a little thicker than this cardboard well, i doubt it shows up the difference in here but it is a fairly heavy gauge it's not like sheet metal it's not going to be cutting that with tin snips but um, I think that'll make a good ash receptacle. I mean, you know, it's just there for looks. I'm going to paint them, like I say, gloss black acrylic enamel. I think it'll look really nice. All right, let me uh, make the piece that goes around in here. Now you can roughly see what my intentions are here. And that'll be a weld up there. And I might, uh, I don't know, I might just tack it and put adhesive panel adhesive I this well this will weld nice so I'll, I'll probably just weld it all the way but that'll uh that's going to be the ash receptacle now it would have had something similar to that in glass probably about that thick they weren't super thick and uh you can go online and google how's standing ash um smoking stand I'm sorry how's it's so called a standing smoking, or sm I don't know, something like that. Standing smoking station, I think. I don't know. But anyway, these will show up, and uh, they're just kind of neat. Some of them the bases light up on. This one it doesn't. The ones that the bases light up, they, they run around 1,200. And I could probably put a power cord up there and some little sockets in there, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to fix it the way it originally was.
And that's why I recommend a good sharp pair of scissors because sometimes you're cutting just little tiny slivers off your uh, patterns. Went around and made sure my taped together version fits in all the little pockets. And it all looks about the same. I loosened this up. This is a pipe thread. There's a pipe that goes through there and a pipe thread in there. So you don't want to tighten things down tight on glass because you'll just bust the glass. You can notice a crack there. I think that's from where somebody previously over tightened this. And I don't want to bust these or anything down there. So, you know, it's still a little, a little loose, which is okay, you know. But that is a pipe thread there, so that's tight. Or, you know, I can tighten it more, but I'm not going to. And, uh, but I did loosen it up a bit and centered this and this, kind of eyeballed it so that the gap is about the same all the way around because it would fit on one and it wouldn't fit on another. So that's why I loosened it up and centered it. And they all fit pretty evenly now. But I'm going to make one of these out of metal first complete and see how I like it. I traced it out on my... Modelers, a little hole burned in it there, so I couldn't make them all there, so I made a couple there. But get those cut out. I double lined it because uh, the cut on the plasma cutter is significant enough to where I don't want a piece too narrow. So I'm going to cut one out, and then we'll go from there. And the, you know, I might need to wipe this off lacquer thinner, get the magic marker off, and remark them. But we'll see. Road King 805 had a set of these for his uh, plasma cutter. And I thought they were just so cool. I actually bought the round ones. I bought these ones and those ones. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is going to be perfect for cutting the curve because I have held it up to the ashtray and the curve is virtually identical. And then I'll just use a straight edge to cut the straight parts. But that'll help for sure. You can see how I'm kind of. This is the first one I just kind of, I'm numbering them because they're actually all a little, this part's not all the same on all of them. So I'm going to number them all, see how they, they fit differently. See how that's different around that edge. I'm going to say this one. So I'm just going to make them and number them. I'll stamp the bottom of these with a number and just write the number on this. And that way they'll all fit in their individual little pocket. They're different enough to where, see, I mean, there's a big gap right there, a big gap right there, and it's hitting there, and it's hitting there. And yet when you put it over here, it fits nicely. So, and I've tried shifting that around more, but it's just easier to make them all separately. I'm using the the plasma cutter. I just put it over a bucket of water to, to cut so I don't get a, a mess in the garage. And uh, they do make inflatable plasma tables. You know, it's just, I mean, you know, it doesn't, it's just rubber that you inflate like a, a big, uh, you know, square thing and then it has a wire mesh and you put water in it and you can cut on it. So and maybe I'll order one of them in the future. But for now, I just cut over a bucket of water and I do those snowflakes and stuff and other things I cut. That's how I do it. Just saves making a big mess in the garage. All right, let me uh, get another piece cut out to go around it. I'll make this one, then we'll do the next one. Now you can see I'm just kind of, I got that piece fit with the metal up to here. <laughs> and now I'm just grinding this down till it's even with this. You know, I don't want it to protrude above that. It's got to gotta just be a tad below it or even with it. So when, you know, something sits here, it doesn't hang up on this. And uh, so I'm just shaving a little off that a little at a time until it's about right. And then I'll tack it up. Or I'll, I'll just make all four of them. Then I'll weld them all at once. But yeah, just kind of using a piece of pipe and body hammer and stuff and just kind of working it around to try and uh, you know get it right but anyway I gotta grind some more off yeah, one is all fitted in this is going to be welded on here eventually like so 
and obviously that'll just sit down in there so I got three more to make that took me about probably 20 minutes to make so let me uh, start on the next one another one fit for space number two we'll make the piece around there next two done two to go Just a little of time bending. It's hard to do this and video at the same time, but I'm just kind of bending and fitting out. And then I bend a little bit more and fit up. And I'm just gonna put away at it here. Well, there's the third one. One more. This edge here was a uh, straight cut on the model. That was uh, cut in a shear, so I know that's square. So I'm just measuring from that edge right up to the edge of the bender just to make sure this is a square bend. And I'm gonna pull it up and put a 90 degree bend in it. A little bit more maybe. Maybe just a touch more. And then I may have to grind some more of this away so it sits down in here. I just kind of, that's how I'm horsing with it. See how that fits now? So I just got to grind a little bit of this away right here until it just sits down in there. Got all four of them made now. I'm going to tack them, take them out and tack them. Make sure they still fit. First thing I'm going to do is stamp a number in the bottom of them before I weld them so I can set this you know part flat on the bench so the stamp shows up and then I'm gonna tack them together make double check to make sure they fit and then I'll weld them up double check again to make sure they fit and then I'm gonna take them on the belt sander and sand this surface so it's all true all the way around then I think I'm gonna take wax paper in here as a release and I'll put some body filler on these and set them down in here so that they have that thick glass look to them somewhat and then i'm gonna paint them that gloss black but i think next is uh stamp the numbers and then tack them up next step i'm going to stamp numbers and this is uh number one that's number one you gotta got all these uh number and letter stamps here and uh so I can number them, and then when they're painted, you'll be able to see them, and I'll, and those are just numbered with a marker. And uh, that way, because each individual ashtray is slightly different because the castings weren't all identical all the way around. All right. And it's, I'm just going to go through and do the rest now. When I was getting my number stamps out, I found this, and I thought this might, some people might be interested in seeing a Trico windshield wiper arm remover tool. It is a AT2. Anyway, you can pause it if you want to read the directions. Just thought I'd show that. There's nothing on the other side. So there we go. I just thought, you know, again, neat old tools that I use. It. do use this on some of the old cars I work on. You know, I work on a lot of old stuff, so I like to have the tools for the old stuff. Another thing I have, this is for lubricating the lobe, you know, on uh, ignition points, cams, or uh, breaker points, I mean, you know, a little cam lobe that runs them. See, see, PD ignition parts, CL1 cam lube. I don't use much of this anymore. Everything I get with points, I uh, convert to Jackson, Tennessee. I convert to um, Pertronics electronic ignition. Next step, I'm gonna run these over to the blast cabinet and bead blast them so they weld up really nice. Sorry for all the noise in here. The fan and the welder's running, my exhaust fan is running, and the furnace is running, but I'm gonna tack these up 
and uh, this is like maybe 16 gauge I'm guessing but anyway I'm gonna hold them and then uh, give them a quick tack this is this welding bench that I made I made it so I could put the clamp and then you know I could weld without having to attach the ground to anything so and I made this hood which will fold out of the way if needed but anyway I'm not gonna video welding these up I'm gonna get them all uh, tacked up make sure they fit and then if they do I'll weld them up solid grind them sand them get them ready to paint they're all tacked and I ground the tack so now I can weld them up solid they all fit quite nice really happy with the way they look in there all right let me get them welded up solid next will be grind the weld so over to the bench grinder we go did the rough grind out on one and it, uh, this is number four. I don't know if that shows up or not. It sits in there nicely. A little body filler and stuff once that's on there to thicken it up a little bit. Make it look, you know, more like it's made of glass. And then I'll do a final sand out on the belt sander to get it, you know, really nice and shaped so the stuff top is nice and level and everything. All right, let me move on to grind the rest out. get the picture just kind of work at it until it looks nice and pretty rough ground out they came out pretty good they hold water too is when I was cooling them I was just letting them sit with water in them too none of them leaked out So I'll give these a final on the belt sander.
I'm going to call this done. It looks pretty darn good. It doesn't matter how you look at them. They look nice. I decided not to put body filler around the, the perimeter of these because they cleaned up pretty darn nice. I'm going to run them through the bead blast cabinet. You can see the number one stamped in the bottom, I think. And I ended up gluing a little piece of wood in the bottom of all of them to kind of you know, so they, because before when they were back like that, you can see there was a big gap right there, and I didn't want the gap at that end. I'd rather have it back here. So that just kind of tilts them forward to where they're against that, and uh, I think they're going to look good. So let me uh, run them through the blast cabinet and get some primer, metal etching primer on them and get them ready for paint. I don't know how the heck I'm going to hang them. I might might drill a little tiny hole in them somewhere just to run a wire through so I can paint them but I'll have to do it in a spot where it's I don't know it might just have to stick a magnet to it and then touch up the bottom but um yeah they're gonna be a pain to paint the whole thing in one one spray I'm gonna use my little door jam gun with acrylic enamel automotive paint and uh be nice to hang them so I could paint the whole thing, but like I say, there's no real true way to hang them, so they're just going to kind of have one little area where there won't be paint, and I'll just go back and touch it up with a little brush, and I think the bottom would be the best place. I got those magnet things. Maybe I'll stick them to those, and I can mask tape around them, and then I can just hold them with a glove you know, with a nitro glove on my hand and spray them. But let me get these things in the blast cabinet and cleaned up. There we go. They're all bead blasted up nice. And what I think I'm going to do is you can see where the weld just kind of melted through a little bit in a couple little odds and ends spots. So I'm going to take my finger with some seam sealer and I'm going to do the edges around here and up here. I primed the inside of them, then flipped them over and primed this side. And like I say, I'll use a, use these to, um, I'll just put some tape around them. And then <laughs> that way I can spray the, you know, stick the tray to this and, and spray the tray. But I don't have any, can't find my seam sealer, so I'm just going to use a little body filler to smear it around with my finger in those little places and sand it out. I'll let that dry a couple hours and then I'll sand it out and they will be ready for paint. I don't know if I'm going to be able to paint today. This video, this video has actually been over about the course of about a week. I just work on it sometimes 15, 20 minutes here and there. And uh, this is a Sunday. And this morning I uh, met up with Tom at Haney's for breakfast and I took the Galaxy. It was 33 degrees out when I left. Yeah, the heater in this car actually works quite well. I was rather pleased. Stayed nice and toasty warm. That's how I'm putting filler in them. So that's what it's going to look like. That's all the filler. And this is ready. To, I'm going to reshoot it with some primer and so it can dry a little while. And I'm going to then I'll sand the rest out and hopefully get them ready for paint so I can paint them in the next day or two. These ash trees are totally ready for paint. I'm going to, I primed them with this before I put filler on them. And then when I was done sanding them out, I just lightly put a coat where the, where it was all bare metal from sanding. And I let that dry a couple hours. And then I came through and put this on it. And that I'll sand out with some 400 tomorrow or the next day. My 500 wet sanded these. Yeah, I used 500. I didn't, uh... Didn't have, couldn't find my 400. I have so much, so many packages of sandpapers just coming out of my ears. So when I was searching for the 400, I found the 500. I thought this is close enough. I'm not going to dig through the box anymore. I have a couple of those gigantic Tupperware bins full. I buy this stuff in estate sales. But there's the ashtrays ready to spray. They came out really nice. So let me get some uh, paint mixed up and start shooting them. I know I'll get asked what kind of paint I'm using, so here it is. This is what I'm using. This is a uh, gloss black acrylic enamel. This is the hardener that I use with it. I'm going to use a little smoothie in case there's little oils or anything. It just prevents fish eyes and 
makes it flow out better and I'm going to use a fast dry reducer because they're small parts and it's actually cold out. It's only in the 40s right now. And this is the gun I'm going to use as my Badger uh, Model 400. And uh, give these things a quick shot and they will shine like that glass and look awesome on the stand. There they are all gloss black. I did not um, video spraying them because I didn't want to get paint on my camera. It's breezy out and the, it's kind of blowing everywhere. But anyway, yeah, they came out super nice. Really happy with them. And while I was at it, I had some leftover paint in the gun and this is probably going to sit outside all winter. So I just painted this because it was starting to, you know, just get a little surface rust here and there. So I just sprayed that with the acrylic enamel too. There's the house smoking stand all finished up. Nice piece of Art Deco furniture for in the house. It's, the house is 1923. And I think this is probably, I don't know, from the 30s maybe. I don't know. But anyway, the ashtrays came out really nice. Little spot, you know, there that needs to be. I don't really think I need to touch that up or paint it. I just leave it. You can see the two primers. But I painted that uh, stick. And like I say, I might paint those a little with a brush. But for now, I'm just going to leave them. I don't think they're going to hurt anything. But there we go came out pretty darn nice. Well that's it for this video. This video has probably taken me over a week to get this thing done because I've only had a little bit of time here and there to work on it. But uh, if you like the video definitely hit the like button. It certainly helps. If you like my channel please subscribe and thank you for watching my videos.